Cleveland's been called the mistake on the lake. The Cuyahoga River caught on fire back in the 70s. We had one of the nation's worst mayors. Um, somebody decided it was a good idea to call Cleveland a plum. And we were a national joke. Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you 12 things you need to know about living in Cleveland, and they're not so bad. Hi, my name is Patty with Patty Sell CLE, and welcome back to my channel, Living in Cleveland, where I make videos about all things Northeast Ohio, Northwest Ohio, and even down South. If you don't wanna miss any of my videos, you know what to do, hit the subscribe button, hit the like, leave some comments. Okay. I've been doing this for a while, have a ton of videos out there, and uh, really haven't done a thing about things you need to know about living in Cleveland. Um, so I thought I would go into 12 things that you need to know about living in Cleveland. And honestly, they're pretty good. And yes, when I was a kid back in the 70s, Cleveland wasn't such a great place to be. Anytime, I mean, I remember watching TV and people would be like, why would you want to go to Cleveland? We were a national joke, the mistake on the lake, and people I still hear call Cleveland that. Well, times have changed. We have a bustling downtown. We have all sorts of positive things happening in our city. So let's get right to it. Number one, Probably the most important, the best thing about Cleveland is the affordability. We are, our cost of living is 11% lower than the national average. Our home prices are, uh, they're, what is it? 49%, 40, 49% lower than the national average. The median home price in Cleveland, and I'm talking Cleveland, the city is $99,000. Now, <clears throat> Cleveland is set up with Cleveland itself and then the inner ring suburbs where the prices go up and the further west or the further east you go, the prices go up. But in the actual city, which there are great neighborhoods in the, great, in the, in the city of Cleveland, the average price is 99,000. So even the most um, more affluent neighborhoods compared to people moving here from California, Oregon, and I have worked with clients from both of those places and, and Colorado, buying a house for four or $500,000 is still way more, ex way less expensive than what they were paying way out West. So Cleveland is very, very affordable. In fact, Cleveland is ranked the number, the top, in the top five, number five in the markets to watch as one of the most affordable cities to live in. So we're affordable. Number two, job diversity. We have, and I've been working with clients now for several years that have been moving here to Cleveland for a job location because we have several Fortune 500 companies that are housed out of Cleveland. Um, Progressive Insurance is in Mayfield on the east side, and that's their headquarters. Let's talk about uh, American Greetings, which is the second largest um, greeting card company. They are housed in Crocker Park and Westlake. Uh, Key Corp, which is the banking system. Sherwin-Williams Paint is here. And let's not mention the Cleveland Clinic, which is the number one employer in um, all of Cleveland. So lots of jobs. And most of my clients that are moving here <clears throat> from other cities are moving here because of a job relocation. So tons of job opportunities in Cleveland. All right, number three. This is kind of a, I don't know if this is, it's just something maybe people don't know. We have NASA here. Um, it's the Glenn Research Center. Um, I have to post a picture. My dad was on, when John Glenn was, what was he, Senator? My dad was on his campaign committee. I have a picture of me sitting next to him when I was like three years old. Um, and that's over by the, the, the Hopkins Airport. And it's not as big as it used to be, but there's still a museum there, which is so cool to check out. So if you're in Cleveland or you've just moved to Cleveland, you're looking for something to do, go check out that museum. Across the street from the research center was all the, are all of the offices, which are no longer offices, but there's like, I don't know, four huge complexes, maybe three, and they're making them all into apartments or condos. So making a great use of that space because Cleveland is in desperate need of housing. So that's kind of a cool thing that we have NASA here. Um, so pretty cool. All right, number four is our healthcare. Cleveland Clinic is world renowned. Um, we've had Shahs from I don't know, all over the country 
all over the world come to Cleveland. They are the number one provider for cardiology and heart care. We also have Metro Health, which is on West 25th Street, and that's a great system. And we also have university hospitals. In fact, where I live, out in the rain, Amherst area, we have, oh my gosh, it's like a, another medical mecca. We have a Cleveland clinic, we have a university, we have Akron's children, we have Mercy. I mean, everywhere you go, there's another, I just couldn't believe it, over just down the street, across from a car dealership, right on the highway. They, the, the dealership used to put their cars across the street on the lawn so people on the highway could see the cars. And now it's an Akron's Children's Hospital. So just nuts. So definitely world-renowned healthcare. Okay, moving on. Number five, we have great universities. Um, it, you really don't need, unless you're an Ivy League student, you don't need to leave the state to go to a great university. In fact, you don't even need to leave the city. Um, and I did not. <laughs> I went to John Carroll University, which is in University Heights. And if you check my University Heights video, I did a little tour of John Carroll University. Now, I only lasted a year there because all my friends from high school went there. I went to Magnificat High School, which is an all girls school. And all my friends from Mags went there. And then all of our friends from St. Ignatius, um, which is the all boys high school, they all went there too. And I was just like, this is just like, I thought I was going to college. This is like high school part two. Um, so I only stayed a year. All my friends graduated from John Carroll though. They got one of the best business programs, great school. I ended up transferring to Cleveland State. And I also got a great, great education at Cleveland State. Um, I graduated, believe it or not, with an accounting degree. And at that time, Cleveland State had one of the best accounting programs in the country. Um, in fact, one of the students just who took the CPA exam like got like a perfect score. I did not. <laughs> I quickly realized that my original plan was to be a teacher. And yeah, after my probably my fourth or fifth accounting class, I realized this was not for me, but it was too late for me to change because I was too far into my program. So I finished it up. Worked in accounting for a little bit and uh, decided it just wasn't for me. And then I went back, but I went back to Cleveland State and I got my teaching certificate and had a great, great experience at Cleveland State. Also, Case Western Reserve is one of the, it's one of the best um, colleges in the country. They have, I think they have a medical school, they have a law, a law school, um, very prestigious not everybody can get into case. Uh, there's also, <clears throat> oh, and if you're into out there, and I think I did a video of that area, univer University Circle where cases, and then you have the C Cleveland Institute of Art, which is nationally ranked as an art institute. Um, and then also the Cleveland Institute of Music, which is pretty cool. We also have um, Oberlin College, which is a suburb in Lorain County. Um, it's not in the city of Cleveland, but either is John Carroll. It's in University Heights. But Oberlin College is well known. In fact, a few years ago, it was it was the most expensive university in the country, higher than any Ivy League school, which is crazy. Um, but some famous people have graduated from there. Um, What's his name? The guy from The Office, Helms. I'll put his picture up there. He graduated from there. That girl who wrote the HBO film Girls, she graduated from there. So it's it's very much a liberal arts, but they have a great music program, acting program, you name it, great school. So excellent, excellent universities. All right, number, I have my little notes here. Number six, we have cultural diversity here. We have so many cool ethnic areas. Of course, my favorite's Little Italy, and I know I did a video on Little Italy. Um, people still live there that are immigrants from Italy. Their family has stayed. Just the restaurants, there's art museums, they have festivals. Oh my gosh, the feast in, in August, it's unbelievable. So Little Italy, we have Asian town, which is so cool. And like little markets, great Asian restaurants. They put on an Asian festival. 
It's really, really cool. We also have Slavic Village, which is kind of on the east side of Cleveland, a little bit, not too far, which is really cool if you want to get any of that good Slavic food. And in Parma, they have Polish vi Village, and Parma's actually known for being Polish. Check out my Parma video, it's pretty cool. Uh, and um, great food, if you want good Polish food, Parma's the place to go, pierogies. Mm, yummy, so good. So, um, oh, let's talk about, and then Karamu House, which is kind of should go with the theater district, but Karamu House is an African-American theater and when I was a teacher, my first assignment was on the east side of Cleveland, and I took my students to the Karamu House. It was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. They taught the kids how to dance. The kids absolutely loved it. In fact, Midwest Living Magazine named Karamu House the best theater in all of the Midwest. So I thought that's pretty cool. Okay, so Karamu House leads me into number seven, which is our theater district. Playhouse Square has 11 theaters and it's the second largest um, theater district after New York Times, New York Square's, um, New York's play, uh, gosh, I can't talk today, New York's um, Broadway. So huge theater district. I have season tickets for Playhouse Square and I'm very excited in a couple weeks, I'm gonna be seeing Pretty Woman. Let's see, what else is coming? To Kill a Mockingbird. We had tickets to see Wicked, but it got canceled because of COVID. I'm very upset because I was really looking forward to seeing Wicked. Um, but then I will be able to see Frozen. So amazing theaters. We get top-notch performers here, um, comedians, you name it. They come to Cleveland because we have such a great theater district. Okay. Oh, we can't miss the Cleveland Ballet. We have a great Cleveland Ballet and the Cleveland Orchestra is amazing. If you're into orchestra, I've been to see them. They're so good. Cleveland Ballet, it's not like it used to be. I'm sure they're still big, but they used to be like so big. Like every year we would go see the Cleveland Ballet do the Nutcracker. I don't know if they still do that anymore, but the Cleveland Ballet is awesome. Oh, and we also have housed the Cleveland International Film Festival, CIFF, and it's usually like the middle end of March, and it's housed in like Tower City where they have all these theaters. Um, people come come to town from all over the place. So great theater atmosphere in Cleveland. Okay, so since we're talking about entertainment, we got to talk about number eight, which is our sports. People don't usually think about Cleveland and sports. Well, maybe after this weekend they do because we just had the NBA All-Star Game, which was in Cleveland, which downtown, I mean, you name it, they were here in Cleveland. Uh, Bill Murray, Cardi B, Adele, uh, Machine Gun Kelly, you name it, they were here this past weekend. Um, so that was fun. And obviously everybody pretty much knows the Cleveland Cavaliers, but they used to suck. Uh, but since LeBron came, you know, we won the championship, which was awesome for Cleveland because let's be honest, uh, the rest of our sports, while we root for them and we're diehard fans, like the Cleveland Indians love them. I remember when I went to the world series, that was so exciting for the city of Cleveland. Of course we didn't win. But we still love going to the Indians games. It's so much fun. Um, the Browns, of course. And uh, I don't know if they're jinxed or what. Because we can have the most winningest season. And then, boom, we mess up. And we don't even get a playoff spot. Which happened this year. Um, but we still love the Browns. And we always say there's always next year. And we also have the Monsters. Which is our hockey team. Now, it's not like... What is the National Hockey League? It's a second tier, but it's so much fun to go to a hockey game. I had tickets once. I took my daughter. We had like low seats. It was, it was, it's just a fun thing to do to go downtown and go see a sporting event. We used to have a soccer league, the Crunch, I think they were called, but I don't think we have soccer anymore. But hey, we got enough to keep us busy. So we definitely are a sports team. Okay, moving along, number nine. We have great museums. Our Cleveland Art Museum, A, is free. 
and it's one of the best museums in the country. They bring in all kinds of exhibits. Um, they're always changing out their works. It's it's just such a fun, the kids don't like it. I took, well, maybe they do if you do it right. My kids were like, oh, can we get out of here? But I love going to the art museum, just walking around. Um, yeah, and it's free, like, hey, let's go. And what's nice about the museums, it's right next to Little Italy. So go see a couple museums and then go take the kids to Mama Santo's or Trattoria or any of those other places and go grab lunch. What a great way to spend an afternoon. The kids do love, there is a children's museum. My kids loved the Natural History Museum. It was absolutely their favorite. In fact, my parents, they had seasoned, they had like, what is it? They were members so that they could take my kids whenever they would watch them. They would always take them to the Cleveland History Museum and they loved it. Um, Cleveland also has, which is pretty cool, um, we have the Christmas Story House. I've never been inside it. I need to go. So they have. The, it's housed in the actual house that was filmed in the movie, and they have all the memorabilia, and it's just a big hit at Christmas time, but it's open all year round. I need to get to it. So that's kind of a cool, fun thing to do, and that's in the Tremont area. So if you go to the Christmas Story Museum, then you can go to Tremont or Howe City to all of those wonderful restaurants. What a day. And of course, I can't be remiss in saying, we have the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. How cool is that? Um, it speaks for itself. And it's so cool if you're coming to Cleveland. And so many Clevelanders, like, like yeah, I've just never been down there. But that was a nice thing about being a Cleveland teacher is we would get, um, we were able to go to take our kids to all these places. Um, and going on, and what's cool about when we would do that, we'd have tours. So... When we took our students to Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, it was like, you know, they had a specialized thing and it was like the history of rock and the kids were just like, oh my God, this is so cool. Um, and that's right downtown on like East 9th, right on the water. And right next to that is the Science Museum, which is also so, so cool. I actually had, I was a member there when my kids were young because they just loved it. And they have an IMAX theater. I remember I took them to see... Uh, um, the Polar Express on that huge IMAX screen, which was so, so cool. So museums galore in Cleveland. All right, I keep mentioning food, and that is number 10. Our food scene is insane. Michael Simon is from Cleveland. He went to St. Ed's. Um, he's like a year older than me. Um, he's from North Olmsted, where I raised my kids, North Olmsted. And no, you don't need to say anything more about Michael Simon. He's still got his Lola. Um, I think he's got Mabel's Barbecue still, um, but he's still a big um, player in the Cleveland in the Cleveland food scene. Um, food Network has been to Cleveland numerous times. I could do a whole segment, probably five segments on the Cleveland food scene. You have the West Side Market, which is awesome. It's such a fun thing to do. It's right on West Twenty Fifth Street. You go in and it's not just like, oh, I'll take a pound of that meat and I'll take those vegetables. They have a pasta company, uh, pizza bagels. My kids always make, like if I'm going to Westside Market, I better get the pizza bagels. Um, they have a, like, you can get to, uh, like a Mexican, you can get little enchiladas to take home. They have Steve's gyros, which are to die for. I mean, you just go there, eat lunch. They have a little cafe, you can have breakfast. Westside Market is awesome. So our food scene in, in every city, I was just looking at last night, my husband was on, the, on Yelp and he's like, we need to get these tacos. And it's Ola Tacos in Lakewood. I'm like, yeah, let's go tomorrow. <laughs> so food, amazing. All right, moving on. Number 11 is our park systems. And I just did a video on the Metro Parks because every client so far that I've worked with moving to Cleveland from other cities have no idea about the parks we have. Our metro parks are amazing. There are 18 nature reservations, over 100 hiking trails, not to mention because we're on the lake. We have all the lakefront beaches. We have golf courses. On top of that, we have the Cuyahoga Valley National Park, which is so beautiful. Um, we, in the fall, we, um, we took a bike ride. We took our, we just got e-bikes and we went through the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. Um, and speaking of bike rides, Cleveland just 
is just finishing this bike. It's called the Tow Trail. And it's so cool. And it's you can start it at Nash, the Cuyahoga Valley National Park and you can take it either through the National Park or you can go the other way and it'll take you to Tremont and downtown Cleveland, which is so cool. There's also a Holden Arboretum, which is, you have to pay to get in there, but it's a beautiful thing to check out. It's over in Kirtland, which is on the east side, um, but it's beautiful. It's hilly and just, they do a really nice job out there. So our park systems are to die, um, which leads us to the last thing, number 12, is Lake Erie. And every video I talk about, I mention Lake Erie because to be able to afford a home on a great lake, because our houses are so affordable and we're on a great lake, it's it, it's the best thing, I think. You know, come summer, we're ready to go. I'm ready to get my jet ski out. Everything we do, it's just so nice. Even in the winter, it's beautiful. We went up to Marblehead on Sunday and the lake is kind of frozen. And even when it's frozen, it's absolutely gorgeous. They build up these dams and you can walk on them. Just don't go out too far. Um, out in, was it Catawba, which is right by Marblehead. Um, bunch of people, they went out on their um, snowmobiles and the ice broke away and the Coast Guard had to come save them, which is so crazy. So don't go out on the ice because that's nuts. But I remember last year, well, we had a cold winter last year. We were remodeling our place in Marblehead. And you have to go over this big Thomas Edison Bridge. And I saw, and they were way out there, probably 10 snowmobiles. It was probably the same crazy people that they had to rescue a couple weeks ago. But um, Lake Erie is absolutely awesome. And just to sit by the lake and see the boats go by, and it's just beautiful. Now, here's a bonus. Number 13, our weather. People are like, who would want to live in Cleveland? In fact, most of those, the negative comments I get on my channel are, your weather is awful. It's gray. You never see the sunshine, blah, blah, blah. Well, okay. It's winter. Yes. We do have some gray days. Yeah, it's gray today. It's snowy, but it's February. Monday, it was 60 degrees and sunny. It was beautiful. All the snow melted. Now it's cold today. We're going to go back to some cold weather, but it's February. But you know what? When I was talking about my bike ride, that was back in probably the middle end of October and it was 70 degrees. Our October was beautiful. We were at the beach every weekend. Um, so yeah, we have some rainy days. We have a winter. It's the Midwest and I keep saying that. But like this past year, because we had such a beautiful fall, we didn't hit peak, like when your leaves turn colors, we didn't hit peak uh, color change until November, which normally it's the first week, like October 8th through the 12th is like your peak time for colors. It wasn't until November 8th or 10th. So we had an extra month of beautiful, beautiful weather. So yeah, the weather, it can suck. April can really be the pits because it's you, you're you ready for, you know, warm weather and it's just rainy and cold all April. But once you hit summer, once it kicks in, it's just, there's no place like Cleveland in the summertime. So those are the things you need to know about living in Cleveland. I do not think we are the mistake on the lake anymore. I think we got it going. And hey, if you're moving to the area and you need some help looking for that house, all my info's right down there. Give me a call, send me a text, send me an email. I answer my phone, I answer my emails, my texts. I'm here to help. So thanks for watching. See you next time.